Hi, I'm Mark Anthony. And I'm Peter Hannock. And welcome to FutureWorks 2022. Welcome back to FutureWorks Live, uh, FutureWorks 2022. I am joined by Jonathan Guest of Safety Shield. Jonathan, good to have you here. Yeah, you. <clears throat> Explain to me, I've, I've seen your podcast and your videos with uh, Peter Haddock. Yeah. Explain to me exactly what Safety Shield is. So Safety Shield's an uh, artificial intelligence collision avoidance system. So it's basically for construction plant, any plant machinery, and it can be aftermarket or OEM fit. So the, it's a camera-based system that's basically scanning the area around the plant and alerting if somebody's in a collision situation. So that was the initial system. What we're actually showcasing here today is the autonomous auto braking. So it takes it to the next step further. We've got it outside on the ADT and the Telegler and the BOMAG, which works with the OEMs, and it's talking through the CAN bus system. So if somebody's alerted and, and a collision is imminent, it will then do a controlled stop of the, the equipment to avoid the collision. You mentioned the controlled stop, and I think that's that's a vital consideration because on a telehandler, you can't just bang the anchors on. You've got to come to a controlled stop or, or the, the load is lurching forward and possibly causing more harm, isn't it? Exactly. So it starts off with massively reducing the revs, so it brings it down to an initial crawl. Uh, it's slightly different, to be honest, with a telehandler because of that, that problem with the load. So with the ADT, it's a controlled brake. With the Bomag roller, it's a controlled and it breaks. The telehandler itself brings it down to almost a, a walking pace crawl and then the driver intervenes and puts the brakes on purely because we don't want the load coming off the end of the forks and then hitting the person that you're trying to avoid so it is all controlled uh that like i said the jcv telehandle is slightly different and the driver needs to intervene at the last minute one of the things that strikes me about um your system is the fact that it is actually identifying people it's not just obstacle avoidance it's actually it can actually identify a human being can't it yeah so it's we it, it's Artificial intelligence, we could train it to uh, recognize whatever we want it to. So for this application, it's purely people. So it's not picking up other objects or cones or barriers because it becomes distracting for the driver. So the system should stay quiet. It's only going to alert or apply the brakes if a collision is imminent with a, a vulnerable person, basically. Now, one of our construction collective colleagues, Nick Drew, always ends his videos with a thumbs up. You're using a thumbs up for a rather different purpose, aren't you? Yeah, it's uh, obviously Lynch plant, plant I, um, we've been working with on this uh, for a while now, and the, they brought the thumbs up to the industry, which is quite a very simple safety procedure, but it's been adopted internationally now across the construction industry, as you know. So if somebody wants to approach the plant, there's a specific area to walk into. They give the thumbs up. The driver has to obviously give the thumbs up back, and they know it's, he's, he's obviously seen them and it's safe to walk in. Now, I know Lynch go around the country doing training for red zone and thumbs up training. Well, what we've done with them is take it that little step th step further and digitalize that in a way. So it's exactly the same procedure, but on the outside of the machine, you've got a digital display, which is a no entry sign. If the person wants to walk in at that exact point, they give the thumbs up. Only when the driver's acknowledged them and seen them, he presses the thumbs up button in the cab, which then disables the machine gives a, thumb, a green thumbs up on the display instead of the no entry, and then the person can walk in safely, talk to the driver, and the driver does not re-engage the machine until he's happy that the person's safely out of the way. That's fantastic. Now, we've had a, a comment. I'm not entirely sure if it's a comment for you, but I will have a very quick look. No, it's just somebody saying, hi, good, good afternoon, Gary. So, uh, Safety Shield, where do people find out more about Safety Shield? Obviously, you can look at our website. It's safetyshieldglobal.com. Um, we've got quite a lot of videos showing the system on YouTube, uh, which is, again, just under Safety Shield Global. Um, we're based in Cheshire, 
but we um, we we operate all over the country. So it's um, yeah, have a look at our website, get in touch that way. Yeah, as far as Future Works is concerned. Future Works is, is basically an exhibition designed for companies exactly like you. What do you make of it so far? Slow day yesterday. Um, obviously, it was setting up, but uh, yeah, it's been it's been good this morning. Shame about the weather, but um, hopefully it'll brighten up this afternoon. Yeah, what is the weather actually doing out there? Because I've been locked in here. I think we've had snow, high and sunshine so far, haven't we? We've had snow this morning. Yeah, the wind's picking up now and blowing everyone's stands all over the arena. So uh, we'll we'll get we'll get out and try and put that back together in a bit. Fantastic! <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, thanks ever so much for being here. Yeah. Right, I'm going to play another video um, while we let um, the, the folks at Safety Shield get back to the day job. Hi, I'm Peter Haddock at FutureWorks and I am here live with Scott McCall. Scott McCall from Snorkel. And behind us, we have one of their range of all electric, all terrain, four wheel drive, scissor lifts and booms. So Sean, tell us a little bit about the product range and why I've put made in the UK and Nissan in the title. So Peter, this is the uh, A46 JRTE which is a 16 meter rough terrain boom. It's powered by lithium batteries instead of a diesel engine, and it's part of a family of nine machines. There's eight access platforms and one telehandler. They're all four wheel drive, and the telehandler's four wheel steer. So essentially you have a machine that's no different than a diesel in terms of performance, yet you've got no emissions, much lower running costs, lower total cost of ownership, um, quieter, um, and it's without compromise. And I think what's interesting talking earlier is the fact that the batteries are made in the UK as well, and you've taken the learnings from how Nissan, the automotive industry works, so that you can have rapid charging and also that capacity of up to two days of operation. Tell me about that and what's gone into the intelligentness of the battery. That's right, so so the, the entire family is built in Britain, in our, in our facility in Washington, Tyne and Weir. Um, the batteries come from Sunderland, just outside the Nissan factory. And the technology that's inside the battery, the cells, are what's taken from the Nissan LEAF. So there's 600,000 Nissan LEAFs been built. Yep. Um, so it's a, a, a fantastic proven technology. One of the big questions people ask about lithium is they've seen the stories about fires in yep. batteries. Um, Nissan have never had a thermal runaway in one of their battery systems. So we know we've got a lot of power a lot of energy density and it's also very safe and proven. Um, so it, it, it's an ideal fit for this, this kind of machinery. We're talking in the hire industry as well here where you do a lot of your business and when we're talking about charging things up, we talk about sometimes thing, tripping a system, tripping the power system. It's not the case with the, the intelligent battery technology you're using, is it? Explain that to us. Yeah, we've, we, We've uh, developed a battery charger purposely for this kind of machine. So one of the biggest problems that people say, as you say, is that a machine trips out, they come to use it in the morning, and it's not charged overnight. So what we've done is develop a, a charging system that looks at what's available from the supply. It talks to the intelligent battery system that we've got, um, and it balances the load. So if you started to plug more things into the transformer, yep. the battery charger would see that it's getting less power from the wall. The batteries wouldn't then demand what they wanted before, they'd change, and it doesn't trip out the transformer. So what happens then is you turn up in the morning and you've got faith that the machine's gonna be charged ready for work. And what's interesting is some of the machines that you sell into the market are being used in a, a shift sense. So, you know, you might have a 10 hour shift, then another 10 hour shift comes on. And what you were saying to me earlier is actually due to the, the, the way in which this is put together, you can charge and, and, and boost that battery enough to do those two 10 hour shifts back to back because you can do it in your lunch hour. And that, that, that's the beauty of lithium battery technology. So if you went from flat to full, it's a, on a 110 transformer, it's a nine hour charge roughly. But realistically, most people never charge like that. And you're not damaging the battery like you would with a, a traditional lead acid battery pack by charging with short charges. So you can do 30 minutes, you can do an hour, you, you, you could do a four hour charge and, and the machine understands that and works with it. So you've not got to, you've not got to fully charge it. And, and the beauty of, of lithium batteries as well is if you're working at 100% charge or 10%, the machine works at the same speed. Whereas with older battery technology, as your charge drops down, 
then you, the machine starts to go slower. So we've got um, some examples where people installing LED lighting in factories have actually got two hours extra a day yeah. out of the machine. Yeah. In other words, they've, they've got a free day in the week or they've got an extra day's productivity just by using a lithium powered machine over a traditional battery pack. And what we say about electric machines as well is, is what about the end of life of electric? Well, fundamentally, with the machines here, you can actually take all of the battery elements and the motor out of this machine, and actually, you can put the diesel engine back in and only export it to another market. So you're not losing anything, are you, when, no, when you get no, electric? We're, we're not at all. And um, we've tried to develop a machine where we've put a lot of time into the battery and charging technology and the control as well. So it's a lot more controllable than a diesel machine. But also, um, we're, we're conscious that engineers and training, um, there's, there's been issues in the industry, we're getting the right number of people through, particularly young people. So really, what we've done is not change the machine from the power unit on, so it's familiar technology that people know how it works. Um, and what we do with our batteries, by the way, when you say an end of life, Snorkel will take those batteries back free of charge. We have a scheme with our, our battery manufacturer where the batteries go into a second and third life, and after that they get recycled. So it's a complete full cycle back to the start. And full cycle, all full wheel, full wheel drive as well. So four wheel drive folks with the team here at Snorkel, all electric, all there to be charged up within those spaces of time so that we can be really, really productive. Fascinating machine, first time I've seen them. Great to see not only the machine uh, in the UK built, but the batteries as well. Thanks very much indeed. Cheers. Thank you. And we're back in the room, uh, back to the Genquip powered uh, green room, uh, courtesy of, of the fine folks at Genquip, uh, with internet provided by Plinks. Um, so the plan now, what have I got? I've got, um, let me see, I've got about 45 minutes. Um, so we've got a we've got a stable internet connection. It's not the fastest. So my plan basically now is to go away, take some more video. I've got to compress it, which I have to do online. Um, and then we'll be back here again at noon, uh, hopefully with uh, one of the guys from JCB. JCB have got a big stand here, uh, predominantly focused upon uh, electric machines. So we'll be talking all things electric, much as we've just done with uh, the fine folks at Snorkel. So be back here at noon uh, when hopefully we will have our guest from JCB and lots of talk about electric machines. But until then, uh, just I want to quickly recap before I leave, uh, just to give you a quick update um, for those that are watching in the field of uh, demolition. Um, we uh, heard this morning that the uh, investigation into uh, alleged collusion within um, the demolition industry, the decision and the investigation conclusion has been pushed back to July. Uh, we had previously been led to believe that we would hear all about it in March. It is now going to be July. And if you chart the progress of how this has gone, um, I think we were expecting a, a decision in October last year. October became March, March became July. Um, so July is the current date, but I wouldn't hold your breath. Back here at noon, um, I've got some videos to compress and I'm going to go and see some people as well. So see you at noon. Stay safe, everyone, and I'll see you again very, very soon. All the best.